Hello, hello, it's Stumpflip here. Here's an item on geometry. Given this figure on the left, we're asked to get the in-circles area. So find the area of this red in-circle of this blue triangle. Credits to the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. All right, so let's talk about um, the thing we're asked about. We're, talk we're asked about the area of the in-circle. So obviously, if you want the area of the in-circle, we're going to need the radius of the circle. So, but we know that there is a nice formula relating uh, and the in-radius now, since it's the radius of the inscribed circle. So there's a nice formula relating uh, the in-radius and the area and the semi-perimeter of the triangle, in this case, the blue triangle. So we know the formula R, or the in-radius, should be equal to the area of the triangle divided by the semi-perimeter of the triangle. Now, the problem is, um, to get the area, well, either I'm going to get three sides of the triangle, or I'm going to get this angle over here, or something similar to that. And, well, obviously for the semi-perimeter, I will have to get whatever this other, uh, what this third side is. Let's just call it length A for now. So our goal is probably to get this A first, because without this A, uh, it's hard to get the area nor the semi-perimeter. So um, this is our agenda. Now, after we get A, we know that we have three sides of a triangle. Obviously, we can get its semi-perimeter, and obviously we can solve the area by uh, Heron's formula. So uh, let's try to make some observations and hopefully it's going to make us close to getting the value of A. So let's try to make some observations. In particular, let's talk about the lengths because, well, essentially that's the only given we're given with. So let's talk about lengths. Now, given this figure, it might be a little bit obvious, but if we were to kind of take the ratios, it's going to make more sense. So 25 is 260 is 265. So if I take the ratio in the simplest term, I'll get the following. I'll get 5 is to 12 is to 13. And for the other ratio, 39 is to 52 is to 65, I'll actually get 3 is to 4 is to 5. And 5, 12, 13 and 3, 4, 5 are actually very famous Pythagorean triples. This suggests that 25, 60, 65 and 39, 52, 65, uh, both of these are Pythagorean triples. What this means is that, well, I guess this triangle must be right, sorry, this angle must be right, and this angle must be right. So essentially, this figure is just two triangles combined to make um, this figure. Now, why do we have to kind of take the ratio? It's just a basic motivation here because we're given with triangles, and generally speaking, um, it's very nice for us to kind of check if it's right or not, because if it's right, then there are a lot of nice theorems we may be able to apply. So that's just the motivation behind here. So whenever you're given a triangle, always kind of make sure that you kind of check if it's a right triangle because maybe you miss that it's a right triangle and it's actually going to cost you because that might be the crucial step to the question. Like, for this, like in this question, after we find uh, that we have two right triangles here, essentially the, the two uh, blue angles, I'm going to make this red for now. Now these two red angles essentially are opposite angles in this quadrilateral. So the quadrilateral here have two angles, um, both 90 degrees, and they're opposite. And this implies a very big C, that the quadrilateral is a cyclic one, right? And if a quadrilateral is cyclic, there we have a nice theorem on cyclic quadrilaterals. We have the Ptolemy's theorem on cyclic quadrilaterals. And this is pretty nice because Ptolemy's theorem on cyclic quadrilaterals allow us to take the relationships of lengths. And that's one step closer to getting the value of A. So let's talk about the Ptolemy's theorem. So the Ptolemy's theorem is going to be equivalent to this statement. Now let's try to talk about what this is. So let's talk about 25 times 39 and 52 times 60. That's actually the product, sorry, the sum of the product of the opposite sides. So 25 and 39 are opposite sides. 52 and 60 over here are opposite sides, so we're going to take the product of opposite sides and add them. So 25 times 39 plus 52 times 60, and that's going to be equal to 65a. 
Now 65 and A, in this case, it's the two diagonals of the sigmoid quadrilateral. So we're going to multiply them, 65A. So the Ptolemy's theorem tells us that the sum of the product of the opposite sides, or the length of the opposite sides, that's going to be equal to the product of the diagonals. And that's essentially what the Ptolemy's theorem is going to tell us. So do remember that because whenever we have a cyclic quadrilateral, chances are it might be able to, you might be able to use that. Anyways, uh, this is now an equation and we can try to solve for A here. Uh, these values are a little bit big, but we realize that 39, 52, and 65, they have a common factor of 13. We can divide both sides by 13. So essentially, it's going to be 25 times 3 plus 54 times, sorry, oops, uh, 50, uh, 4 times 60 is equal to uh, 5a. So let's try to do this. 25 times 3 becomes 75. 4 times 60 is 240, and that's equal to 5a. So 315, that's going to be equal to 5a, dividing both sides by 5. a is equal to 63. So we have here, a is equal to 63, and we've reached our goal of finding uh, this length of a. So we know that whatever follows next is just going to be getting the area and the semi-perimeter of this blue triangle. Because we have the formula, r is equal to area over semi-perimeter, r being the in radius of the, the circle that we want. So let's try to do that. Uh, the semi-perimeter is easily acquired now, now that we have the three sides. So 39, 60, and 63, add them up, and then divide it by 2. So we're going to get the semi-perimeter to be 81. Now for the area, uh, which is the concern, we just have to use Heron's formula. So let's try to do that. So the Heron's formula, it's going to be square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, where A, B, C, that's the three sides. So let's try to do that. So the square root of s, that's just 81, s minus a, let's just say 63 for now, s minus 63, sorry, 81 minus 63, that's going to be 18, 81 minus 60, that's going to be 21, 81 times 30, uh, sorry, 81 minus 39, that's going to be 42. It's just a matter of um, taking the square root of this number inside. It's a little bit big, but we can use um, some factoring, factoring here to help us. Uh, the 81 is pretty good, so let's just make it as 9 squared for now. And we can kind of factor out the rest here. Now it's pretty good that um, this 18 has 9 times 2. And 21, we're just going to write it as 21 because we realize that the 42 is 2 times 21. So essentially, um, 2 times 21, 2 times 21, so we have two 42s here. And we have a 9 squared, and this one is essentially a 3 squared. So uh, the product of the things inside the squared is essentially 9 squared times 3 squared times 42 squared. So in taking the square root, this would be relatively simple now. It's just going to be 9 times 3 times 42. And all we have to do is just kind of multiply it out. You guys can work out the maths here, but I'll tell you guys that this will be equal to uh, 1134. So 9 times 3 times 42 that's going to be equal to 1134. So the area of the triangle is going to be 1134. So to get the radius, it's just going to be simply equal to area over semi perimeter. So 1134 divided by 81, that's just going to be equal to 14. All right? So you guys can work out the math here. We're going to get the radius of the circle to be 14. So last step, just simply get the area. So now that we have the radius of the circle to be 14, it's just simply pi r squared. We know that r is going to be equal to 14. Pi times 14 squared. Now 14 squared is going to be 196. So the area of the triangle, sorry, the area of the circle would be 196 pi. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!